Hiya. Hello. Welcome to the Geeky Girls Knit Podcast. I'm Cece, also known as Java Pearl. I'm Dami, also known as Dami Doodles. And we're glad to have you today. Today is Thursday, the 29th of December. No. Today is Thursday, the 29th of November, 2018. I was doing some stuff all ago where I was doing stuff in December. And so my brain just jumped there. And December starts on Saturday, so. Um, this is episode 321. Thank you so much for understanding about us not recording last week. Uh, if you didn't see the announcement, Dammy was sick and needed to be on vocal rest for her concert on Sunday, which I'm going to put some video in of that in Yummies. It's really cool. Oh. It's fun. It's Yummies. Because I got to come see you sing. No, the video. What about the video? Not about to take video. Did you see on Instagram SPU reposted somebody who took video? I don't remember. That was last week. I've tried to sleep since then. That was on Sunday, sweetheart. That was this week. Yes. Um, we'd like to say a big welcome back. We haven't done a heart in a week. I've gotten confused. We love you guys. Uh, and a big hiya to any new viewers. Thanks for giving us a shot. We hope you enjoy the show. Goodness, taking a week off. I totally forgot what I'm doing. Um, Dammy, nobody introduced themselves in the last two weeks. Um, but why don't you tell them why they should join our Ravelry group? And what you do and all that. Uh, you should join our group on Ravelry and introduce yourself in the introduction thread because you'll get a shout out on our next episode and be able to participate in all our owls and giveaways. That is correct. Well, we have quite a lot to talk about since we um, <laughs> missed a week. Um, we also have a um, special guest, Dr. Hubs at Pink Pearl Alban, who came on for Ask mm -hmm. the Geeky Girls. Thank you, Pink Canyon. She is sleeping right now. When is she not sleeping? We'll get her after a while. She's sleeping. Um, so they came in for Ask the Geeky Girls. Uh, stay tuned after the credits for Christmas karaoke. Not one song, but two since we missed last week. And lots of other stuff. Oh, the new, the December, January, February Winter Wonderland Owl. All kinds of stuff happening today. So grab your knitting. Grab something to drink and let's get started. And now we're going to talk about what is on our needles. What's on your needles, Sammy? <laughs> um, I'm going to work on it over Christmas break. It's the week before finals. I'm stressed. I'm sorry you're stressed. So, yeah, I'm working on those straightforward myths, but I'll. Hopefully during winter break, it will be more straightforward. Yes, and that you'll finish them. Because they would be nice to wear on campus. You froze. I'm not froze. No, you. My internet connection is unstable. Wow. Hey, hi. I love technology. Don't worry, next week we will be recording in person together. Until Dabby goes back to school in January. So, um, could you please keep talking while I finish this row? Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, just keep, just keep going. Mm hmm What? 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 Um, mm, I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh -huh. I would just love to know what um, you're up to. Um, what'd you have for lunch today? A <laughs> burger. A, bur a burger. Well, this sounds better than what I had. Okay, I'm done with this row. I can now talk. So what's on your needles? Something that I had hoped would be off my needles yesterday, and it did not happen, but it is so freaking close. I have been working on my Nanny Suemo 2018 Granito sweater, okay. which is the Granito pattern by Hoki Locatelli on US 2.5 3 mil needles and US 4 3.5 mil needles in nano stitch laboratory scientific sock in a one-of-a-kind lab experiment color way. So here we go. Ooh! So, 
I cheated and I am making the insides of the pocket in garter stitch because I can knit that faster. So one pocket is done. The other pocket I need to knit I don't know like 10 more rows and bind off and then I need to sew the pockets together and we get a couple ends. I've woven in most of them and I will be done with my sweater. Wow. I had hoped to finish it yesterday and it just did not happen. But Dammy, what? I would like you to take a guess at how many stitches the sweater will be when it is completed here in just a little bit. So many. I know. Do you have a guess? 80 something. You apparently have not been looking at my uh, progress picture. I'm on Instagram. sorry. Because <laughs> I was already over 100,000 yesterday. So 120 something. No. 108,973. Well, 120 is closer than 80 something. Um, so this is like the equivalent of doing Nanny Swimmo, Swimmo twice plus some. Why would you do that to yourself? I didn't think it was going to be this many stitches. So it only, really was though. It's craziness. So the the two things that I changed, I am doing garter stitch for the insides of the pockets, and I made it longer before I started the pockets because I wanted it to be more. Um, I, just, I wanted it to be longer. That that's that's what it comes down to. I wanted it to be longer so that I could wear it more comfortably because that's just how I am. So, oh, Lord willing and the creek don't rise. I will finish this today. I can soak it and block it and wear it to church on Sunday, which will make me very happy. In fact, I may just put it on and wear it every day because I'm so proud of myself for knitting this 108,973 stitch sweater. It's, it's taken, this is my fourth skein. And I have none left. This is the only, this is all I have left. So, um, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. So that is all I have been working on. I have much knitting I need to get back to when I finish this. I need to get back to my zigzag blanket. I need to knit four preemie hats that I missed in the month of November. I've got Dammy's birthday wrap that I'm hoping to have finished by Christmas. Um, I need to knit uh, mittens for my besties boys. I need to knit two baby sets for my friend who's having a baby in just a few days. But we're, we're going to do a shower after the fact, in, like in January. And the stuff I knit normally doesn't fit immediately, so I'm just going to shoot to have it done for the shower in January. Um, and I need to knit the Dr. Hub's Christmas socks, Dammy's Christmas socks, and my Christmas socks. Plus all of December's preemie hats, and get back started on my English paper piecing. And then when I get yarn in, uh, start the design for the My Favorite Murder Mystery Wrap pattern that's coming in the new year with yarn by the amazing Diane of Suburban Stitcher and Glass Stitch Marker by Anne of Ann Tudor and a t-shirt by my friend Amanda of Nerdy Knits and Designs. It's going to be awesome. I cannot wait. And a portion of the proceeds from that uh, kid and pattern sale will go to in the backlog to um, to help uh, test the untested rape kits that are in everywhere. There's lots of them that have not been tested. So, um, yeah. So I have a lot of knitting to do. It's been more difficult for me because 
I started doing a part-time virtual assistant job. And so if I wasn't doing that, I probably would have had this sweater done probably a week, week and a half ago. So, um, but you do what you can when you can, and that's all you can do. So um, we have no finished objects. Mm. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to yummies. And now it's time for our favorite part of the show. Yummies. What are yummies, Dammy? Yummies are our current favorite things, things we like, things we want to talk to you about. Yummies. And we have quite a few yummies today to talk to you about because you start. we've got lots going on. So if you have been around for very long, you have heard me wax poetic about my love and admiration and obsession with bullet journaling. And over the years, I have transitioned from uh, one way of doing it and modified it and made it my own, and it's really working. And I'm trying to remember when this, it must have been on Instagram somewhere. I saw a Bujo cover from uh, the, this company called Lady Falcon Travelers. It's um, falcontravelers.com. I'll put a link in the show note, show notes. Um, and immediately started following her because I loved what she was doing. And my mama and daddy sent me money for my birthday. And I finally decided which cover I wanted and ordered it. And it came yesterday. And I'm so in love with it. You've seen it probably already on the social medias. But I got... The 100 acre wood map on a dyed pink leather. There's Eeyore in his gloomy place. I can't see what I'm showing you. Christopher Robin, poor Pooh Bear. There's Pooh Bear. And um, it, came, it comes with, uh, well, she put it for me, uh, four cords because I use four different. Uh, moleskin style notebooks. It also came with two bookmarks and they made it say CC. Um, she also sent me this really cool, you can see it says memories and it's just on a, um, binder clip. And so I have it in the section where I write my daily gratitudes and I am just, so in love with this notebook cover and she did an amazing job um, I got it in her I don't know if you can see it her fifth anniversary sale um, and so it got a special thing on it to say fifth anniversary and not only that okay I'm unplugging my headphones for a minute so I can show you something sent this um, headphone cover so you stick your headphone thing through it and then you like wind it around and then you close it and it snaps. I cannot make it snap. There we go. And it's a headphone case. Mute yourself before you plug it back in. Oh, hold on. Mute. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so she sent that to me for free, which was very, very sweet of her. So um, her name is Monique, and she does lots and lots of different designs. Um, she does lots of fandom designs. She does, um, there was one really pretty one not too long ago where she had painted uh, the customer's cat on the cover. I want her to paint my cat. <laughs> It's, it's so pretty. Um, so I really would like to get a second one with, uh, that looks like River Song's TARDIS notebook. Um, so the, um, and full disclosure, the link in the show notes to her site, 
does give me some points that I can then use to um, make the next purchase cost less for me. So just full disclosure there, but I'm so in love with it. Um, she did an amazing job. It came from the Netherlands. She lives in the Netherlands. So I'm just so in love with it and yes. So I'm going to stop talking now and let you talk for a minute. Okay. So I got a package in the mail from Jasmine of the Knitmore Girls. Um, and it was something she made for me, this scarf. It's beautiful. It's very it's woven. Rainbow. It's rainbow. It's got tassels with beads. I was going to say, what is on the bottom? It's beads. Oh, how fun is that? I love it. Beautiful. And it's really lovely and nice. And thank you, Jasmine. I already sent her a thank you message, but thank you again. Tassels and beads for the win. Rainbows and tassels yeah. and beads for the win. That might have to be the episode title. Um, that's so awesome. Mm -hmm. That was very, very sweet of her. Okay, let me stop knitting and show you the next thing. So we got our monthly Knit Crate subscription, and I literally screamed out loud when I saw the yarn that we got for this month. It's pink. It's it's more of a purpley pink, but it is um, oh Uru God. yarn. Uru yarn uh, by Knit Crate. This is their sugared worsted, which is a seventy percent superwash merino. 20% nylon, 10% Stellina in the roses colorway. And this is going to be joining my stash. And it will become something amazing. I'm not sure what yet, but it will. And then also they sent the um, pattern book. So these were the four potential colors that you would get. Um, okay, so there is a crochet pattern called Fruit Ridge by Jen Dwyer. Uh, it's a crochet pattern. It's so pretty. Makes me want to know how to crochet so I can knit it. I mean crochet it. Beautiful. And then there is the Twinkle Mitts by Sandy Rosner, which is a knitted pattern. Very pretty. And then there is the Twinkle Cow pattern by Sandy, Sandy Rosner. And it's knitted. And there is the Twinkle Hat also by Sandy Rosner. So you could have matching hat and, and mitts uh, also knitted. And then That's it. So that's a beautiful, beautiful um, box that we received for this month. Um, there's a link in the show notes where you can get a uh, discount. Um, so if you are interested in getting a Knit Crate subscription, which is really awesome, you get gorgeous yarn every month and patterns, you should go check it out. Um, okay, so... I've talked in years past about this. Um, so I have been a member probably for 20 years now of um, an email group, uh, which we've gone through all of the different things. There was one list. There was GeoCities. No, GeoCities was a website builder thing. There was e-list, there was one list, there was Yahoo groups, we're a Google group now. Uh, it's not as active as it was back then, but um, one of my favorite parts about it is every year I host a Christmas ornament exchange. And um, this year, my lovely person who sent to me um, sent me three ornaments because she knew that we were kind of rebuilding our Christmas decorations after uh, coming back from Scotland. So she said this adorable kitty 
Y- is it a little cute? She said she looked for one that looked like pink pearl and couldn't find one. So she sent this one instead. It looks close to pink and it's a tabby. Yeah. It's just more of an orange tabby than a a brown. And then she sent, these are glittery. She sent peace with an activity in it. And she sent pox. I'm trying to get it. Ah. Joy. Joy. With an activity in it. So that was very, very sweet of her. She also sent chocolate. It's all gone because we ate it because chocolate. Mm. So, um, yeah. Um, Dammy, do you want to talk about your Christmas concert? I meant to bring the program over here. It's on my desk. Do you have it handy? Uh, no. Hold on. I'll grab it. Did I talk or? Uh, oh, okay. Well. It's a- <laughs> Did you say anything about me while I was gone? No. Did you say anything while I was gone? I a- asked you if I should talk and then you left. Oh, sorry. Here's the program. Yes, yeah, so there was a concert at Benavaya Hall, which is the opera hall, well, one of the opera halls here in Seattle. Um, and the concert is called The Sacred Sounds of Christmas. And does it say what number of concert it was? 19. 19th annual Sacred Sounds of Christmas concert. So basically, it's a Christmas concert with all the choirs at SPU and the orchestra. Yeah. Yeah. So there was the concert choir, the chamber singers, <laughs> the gospel choir, the women's choir, the wind ensemble, the symphony orchestra, the worship ba- band, and the organ. Um, mm-hmm. And different groups did different things through it. Um, there were several like hymns and carols that we sang together. My favorite one that you did was um, While Shepherds Watched Their Flocks. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also really liked the Gaelic Alleluia. Mm-hmm. It was very, very pretty. It was lovely. It was just a lovely, lovely night of music. And I'm going to try to put in a video or two here. So put a note in the show notes, Dammy, so that I stop it and restart. Put in an illegal video. You got it. <laughs> um, yeah. I was not the only one taking photos and videoing. Did yeah, you? I could see someone's flash. I'm like, if you're gonna if you're gonna take video somewhere, you're not supposed to at least turn off your flash. Yeah, I didn't have my flash on. It was not me. It was not me. Yeah, no, it was someone on the um, on the floor. Fun times.
Um, is there anything else you would like to say about the concert? It was a long day. Yeah, because y'all, you had to be there at noon. We had day of tech. Yeah, that's rough. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, okay. So I want to remind y'all that this year we are um, letting you guys spicing help. things up. Spicing things up. We're letting y'all help choose what Christmas karaoke songs we sing. So we'll be singing two at the end of the show today after the credits since we didn't record last week. And then we need y'all to go to um, Ravelry and look for the 2018 Christmas karaoke thread. I actually linked it in the show notes. But uh, y'all need to, to vote which song you would like us to sing next week. So the options are Hark the Herald Angels Sing, Let It Snow, Silver Bells, and We Need a Little Christmas. So uh, go on over there to the Ravelry. Exercise, exercise your democratic right. That's right. Yep, so pop on over there and choose, and we'll see what happens. All right, do we have any other yummies, Dammy? Nope. I feel like there's something else, but I don't know what it is. So, anyway, so... Yummy. What? What did you say? I say pink is a yummy. She is. Pink! She's sound, she, she sound asleep. Do you really want me to go get her? Okay, you have to talk while I'm gone. Okay. I really love Pink Pro. She is my baby, and I love her, and I would die for her. And also, we've got... Um, I, I shouldn't talk about this, no, because she'll say that I talked about it wrong. So let's just wait and see my baby. Ah, where's my baby? There's my baby. <laughs> There's my baby. There's my baby. Didn't unmute myself. What did you say while I was gone? I said I love Pink Pearl. I was going to talk about GGK Crafty Pad, but I didn't. Oh. Hi, right, say hi, Pinky. Hi, Pinky. Say I was sleeping. Where's my little baby? Do you want to talk? <laughs> she looks so annoying. She's like, why did you wake me up? I was sleeping. I was sleeping, Dammy. You sleep so much. That's what cats do. And they cuddle people. Yep. And they give them kisses. Yep. And you give them kisses. Yep. So let's talk about hashtag ggk crafty pad what is it dammy <laughs> it stands for geeky girls knit crafty photo a day challenge we have a list of photo prompts for each month so take a look at the prompt for that day take a picture related to it and post it anywhere you like but we pick our favorites from instagram that's right and we released the december list this week which is all about christmas and advent and new years and all those fun things so take uh -huh. a look at it um dammy what are we about to show them Oh, uh, did we want to talk about the December list is live now, too? That's what I just talked about. Oh, I blanked out then. Okay. Two <laughs> photos from us that we liked and five photos from other people that we like. Here come the photos. Say bye bye, Dammy. Bye bye, my baby. I see you soon. Bye. Here you go. Okay. <laughs>
Oh, she still wants me to pet her tail. <laughs> She's like, you're in Bubba's chair. What are you doing, Mama? Oh, you need some scratches? I love me, little baby. So those are our favorite photos. Great job, everybody. It's never too late to join in. You take a look to, at the prompt for the day. I didn't, I didn't look at today's prompt. Thankful. Thankful. Um, you interpret it however you want. And post it on Instagram. Make sure in the caption you use hashtag GGK Crafty Pad. If you are participating in GGK Crafty Pad and you have a private Instagram account, you need to message Dammy, who is Dammy's Doodles, um, to make sure she's following you. Otherwise, we can't see your photos. So, uh, and yours might get chosen. So, um, Dammy, there's one upcoming event that uh, mm -hmm. we'll be attending. Do you want to talk about that? Um, sure. So the play that I'm in here at the SPU Theater, Before the Eclipse by Anton Chekhov, it's an extended comedy, um, opens on January 31st, and then it runs um, February 1st and 2nd, and then the 7th through 9th as well. All that is at 7.30, and then there's a February 2nd matinee at 1 p.m. Yes, soon. Hopefully there will be a Facebook event that I can link it up to. Yeah. But in the meantime, I linked to the info on the SPU website. Mm -hmm. so. All righty. Well, I think that is everything for Yummies. So we should move on to the next segment. talk about what we are reading, watching, and listening to. That's right. Why don't you start? So I finished reading both The Power by Naomi Alderman and The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. Wait, and now I need to highlight Dorian Gray because I already did the show notes so that I can mark it finished. Thank you. And so I need to find something new to read. But I'm also reading The Glass Scientist, which is a webcomic by Sabrina Cotingo. Okay. Do you have any thoughts on what you're going to read next? What? Do you have any thoughts on what you're going to read next? No clue. No clue. Okay. Do you want something... Um, I can't think of the words. Do you want something like a light and fun, or do you want something that's like a classic? I, I really don't know. I want to get past finals first. Okay, that makes perfect sense. So, I know with all the reading you've been doing for your classes that you have gotten in your 15 minutes a day. What mm -hmm. am I referring to? The October, November, December row. Wait along. That's right. So, this is a challenge for you to read at least 15 minutes a day every day. Um, and there is a finish line thread in the Ravelry group where you post once and then you edit the post. The minimum information you need to tell us is that you read 15 minutes every day. Um, the, but you can post more information such as exact time, even down to the second some people do. Um, you can tell us what you're reading, etc. I don't care what you're reading, as long as you're reading, audiobooks do count. And um, there are two categories of prizes for this read-along. If you read at least 88 if you read 88 to 92 of the 92 days, you'll be entered into one or more giveaways for one of our eBooks. You'll get a 20% off any single pattern coupon code and you'll get a virtual badge. If you read between 61 and 87 of the days, you'll be entered into one or more giveaways for a single pattern from our store uh, and you'll get a virtual badge. Hashtag is GGKRAL18. And um, also, we're planning to continue this into 2019. And Dammy and I were talking about doing something special potentially um, if you read the top category, the 88 to 92 of the days or whatever it is. I know it's off by a day or two or whatever, depending on the months. 
um, doing something at the end of the year next year if you do all four seasons worth. So we're thinking about that um, and going to see what we can come up with. I've done a lot of reading. So mm -hmm. I'm still watching, uh, not watching, I'm still reading Girl, Wash Your Face by Rachel Hollis. I finished reading Body Positive Power, How Learning to Love Yourself Will Save Your Life by Megan Jane Crabb. This one was a really interesting one. It had a lot to do with the um, body positivity movement. And there were some things I agreed with in the book and some things I disagreed with. But um, it, was, it was just interesting to read about the author's journey and such. So I just during lunch finished reading Cozy Minimalist Home, More Style, Less Stuff by Mike Lynn Smith because it's due at the library tomorrow. So I finished it over lunch. <laughs> um, I'm still reading Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, which is book number two in the Harry Potter series by J.K. Rowling. I'm rereading it with Harry Potter and the Sacred Text podcast and Swish and Flick and All Potter podcast. Um, I just listened to Yesterday Baby, um, the Dueling Club uh, chapter where... What's his name? Lockhart mm -hmm. is doing the dueling club. So, um, and then other fiction that I read, I read book 24 of the Stephanie Plum series by Janet Ivanovich and I'm waiting for book 25, but it was just released recently. And so there's a lot of people in the wait line for this book. So I read behind her eyes by Sarah Pinborough. I read the death of Mrs. Westaway by Ruth Ware. I read a hysterical book, it was so funny, called The Frame Up. It's book number one in the Golden Arrow series by Megan Scott Mullen, and it's about a woman that works in the uh, gaming nerdy industry. And um, so there's all this talk, talk about geeky stuff that either you and I like or that we know about or whatever, and it was, really, it was just really funny. I enjoyed reading it. Um, I read The Siren by Kira Cass, which was so good. Um, she's got other books out, and I've put uh, a hold on them to try to read them. I read the third book in the Custard Protocol series called Competence. It's by Gail Carriger, um, and that was very funny. I enjoyed that. And then I've started, this is another one of those series where I read some of these, but I don't know where I stopped. And there's more. So I'm reading the In Death series by J.D. Robb. I've read books one and two. Um, and they are criminal thrillers set in the future. So I am enjoying that. Let me grab a drink of water. Because I, I didn't watch almost any of these. I know. You can talk about the movies that you watched with me. I don't remember which ones they were. I know which ones they are. Oh, no, I wasn't talking about the Hallmark movies. I was talking about the other ones. What? Oh. Okay. So I have watched a bazillion and a half Hallmark Christmas movies in the last two weeks. I have watched It's Christmas Eve. It's Christmas, comma, Eve. Christmas in Love. A Veterans Christmas, Christmas at Graceland, Return to Christmas Creek, Christmas in Evergreen, Letters to Santa, A Godwink Christmas, Last Vermont Christmas, Hope at Christmas, Reunited at Christmas, Christmas at the Palace, Pride, Prejudice, and Mistletoe, and Christmas Everlasting. Christmas Everlasting was one that I watched last night, and it was actually a Hallmark Hall of Fame one, so it wasn't cheesy like all the other ones are. Um, it's about a woman whose older sister uh, was in a car accident when, she, when um, at college age, and her sister was a few years younger than her, and she blames herself for the accident because her sister was coming to pick her up, and it caused some uh, brain damage, and then um, the younger sister had kind of fled to New York and like lived just life away because she, she just felt such shame and guilt over what happened. And then her older sister unexpectedly died. Uh, this all happens like in the first five minutes of the movie. And um, her sister goes back to her, their hometown and it's about, it's about um, just 
learning more about her older sister and um, kind of coming to terms with with what happened and forgiving herself. So it was actually a really pretty a good one. So I have a couple more to watch and then as always there'll be more this weekend. So but we watched three other movies, Dammy. Why don't you talk about them? So we watched White Christmas, which is one of our Christmas staples. We watch it every Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Um and usually sometime else beyond that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we also watched a movie called The Man Who Invented Christmas, which about Charles Dickens. The lead and got... Oh, go ahead. No, I was going to go on to the next one. Oh, the lead guy, the guy that played Charles Dickens, is from Downton Abbey, and he was also the Beast in the live-action Beauty and the Beast. So that was kind of cool. Mm -hmm. And then we watched Solo, a Star Wars story. Harrison wasn't there. Of course he wasn't. My beloved Harrison. He's watching me from across the room. Oh gosh. And um, yeah, that's all the movies. Yeah, so lots of movies. Lots and lots of movies. Um, I'm still re-watching season seven of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Um, okay, let's see. Um, I watched season 10 of NCIS LA, season 12 of Murdoch Mysteries. Season 16 of NCIS, and there's rumors going around that Mark Harmon is leaving. Um, he is producing a new show, which he already produces uh, regular NCIS and NCIS New Orleans. So I don't know what will come of it, but there is rumblings that he might be leaving, which is sad because it's not NCIS without Gibbs. Um, watching season five of NCIS New Orleans, season five of The Flash, season 14 of Criminal Minds, Rossi's remarrying his third wife, mm. which is very sweet that they were able to work things out. Watching season 14 of Supernatural, season 12 of Big Bang Theory, season one of Murphy Brown, I'm hearing it's not being renewed after the 13 episodes. Um, so, uh, season four of Blind Spot. I will come back to those two. Season four of Supergirl, season seven of Arrow. Uh, okay, Outlander. There was actually two episodes since we didn't record last week of season four. So I watched The False Bride, which had Clarence the Mule in it from the books, which was very funny. Um, and Roger is a great musician. And there was the whole fight with Roger and Brianna. And then Claire and Jamie got to where will be Fraser's Ridge. And they're going to build their home and all that. And then I watched the episode Common Ground, and Claire is, was baffled by the fact that everyone knows how to knit, even the men. And she was just like, what? And she doesn't know how to knit, so she's going to have to learn. They're starting to build their home. Roger found out about Fraser's Ridge. So in the future, Roger found out about Fraser's Ridge and told Brianna, and now Brianna is going to try to travel through the stones. OMG, what's going to happen? I know what's going to happen, but that's that. And then we actually watched three episodes of Doctor Who because we had Thanksgiving with uh, my dear friend Mel and her family on Friday after Thanksgiving. And I had been talking to her about Doctor Who. She's watched different episodes here and there, but she had not ever watched Series 5, Vincent and the Doctor, which is my very, very, very favorite episode of all of the series. Um, so watch that and cried as one does. And then out of season, uh, not season, series 11, I watched Kerblam. Um, and I really did not expect it to be Charlie who was the one that was causing all the problems. And now I can never look at bubble wrap the same way again. Because there was bubble wrap was killing people. Yes. It was, if you pressed it, it exploded. Ooh. So, and then I watched uh, The Witchfinders, and this was the first time for uh, the 13th Doctor to face gender bias, uh, because they went back in time, and, uh, the King, and King James uh, was like, she couldn't be the one in charge of this stuff, because she's a woman, and so there was that. And then she's still trying to figure out a name for her companions. She said, team, gang, fam. 
they still haven't figured it out. So that is all of the TV. There was a lot of it. There was multiple episodes of pretty much everything listening to. I have been listening to the Cece and Dammy Heart Christmas playlist that we created last year. So I put that in the show notes in case you want to listen. There's also one um, that's Cece and Dammy Heart Christmas Musical Playlist, but it's only got like eight songs on it. And I've been listening to My Favorite Murder. What have you been listening to, my dear? Um, just random Spotify playlists and a bit of cabin pressure. Okay. And the cabin pressure as it listed along starts on Saturday first. Mm-hmm. And again, we're listening in the order it was released, not in alphabetical order. So, and I'm going to be doing the log bus again this year where I mm-hmm. vlog every day in December. Um, I'm thinking that... What I'm going to do is release my Vlogmas videos in the morning. So what would be in it is the day before stuff. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So I probably will record on Friday so that that can go live Saturday morning for December 1st. Um, and I will be also sharing in my Vlogmas videos um, about our 31 days of Christmas and highlighting some of the patterns that are in that. So stay tuned for the end of the podcast where we tell you the first category, the first week that you'll be able to get 25% off on. So, all right, Dan, we have a couple of owls to talk about, so we should probably move on to the next segment. Now we're going to talk about our September, October, November artistic autumnal owl. This this runs from the 1st of September through the 30th of November and is for any project that you can knit, crochet, weave, or spin that you can convince us released to autumn. Um, Tomorrow or today, Friday, November the 30th, is the day that this podcast goes live and is the last day to enter your projects for our autumnal owl. So go post them. And then we will lock the FO thread the morning of Saturday morning, the 1st, and we'll announce Mm -hmm. winners on next week's episode. Dammy, since you did FOs before we started recording, there's been like 16 projects posted. Oh, well. Um, It's it's okay. You'll announce them next week who finished. Uh, uh, Several of them are by the same person. Um, So why don't you tell us who has finished projects these last two weeks? Okay. Angie's Hip, Another Yarn Nine, Asteroid, Craft Sun Told, Craft Worker, Crafty Sarah, Crafty Textile Lady, Dedor Four, DG White, I Know Our, Frymeister, Fun Friend, Inky Minky184, Jodadaya, Carlene Page, Knit Central, Knitter Chow, Knit Live Love, Leaner, Elle McCall, Little Mermaid, Little Angel SG2, Mama Mia64, Master Box P248, Nose Crochet, Mystery Sewer, Nicole S, Panushka, Psycho Hulakian, Restraus, Scrap Fair, Shirley Knits 123, Silver Luna 2112, S Keeling, Skyline Knits, The Cat Knit, The Fiber Smith, and VT Kimmy Kim. Great job, everybody. Um, so watch for the winners to be announced next week. And if you are a prize winner, you'll have 30 days to claim your prize or you forfeit it. All right, let's move on to the next owl. And now we're going to talk about our December, January, February. Walking in a winter wonderland. Ow. Ba-doop, ba-doop. So this starts on the 1st of December, and it runs through the 28th of January. No, nope. February. Of February. I can see February right here, and I just said January. Like I said, December instead of November a while ago. It's for any project that you can crochet, weave, or spin that you can convince us relates to winter. And what's the fallback? You made it in the winter. Oh, but there's other ways. Like, you could tell us. Yeah, I, I was going to, but you just skipped past it, so we're, oh. we're fine. Okay. We're fine now. So, okay. no whips are allowed in this alley. Your project must have been begun no earlier than the 1st of December and finished no later than the 20th of February. Every project of at least 20 yards that you finish and post in the FO thread counts as one entry into the giveaways. If your project is not at least 20 yards, you need to group it in a single post with other projects that together total at least 
20 yards. Yes. Feel free to poly dip in other owls long, as long as it fits in with other rules. We have lots of lovely prizes on the screen right now that we're going to talk about. But if somebody would like to donate one, what should they do? Email us at geekygirlsknit at gmail.com or PM Java Pro on Ravelry. That's me. Do you want to start or do you want me to? I will start. So we've got a Christmas tree bag made by Donna's Designs Shop, donated by Rhonda, who is dueling needles. Your microphone is rubbing up against something, just FYI. Um, we have a Christmas stitch marker set made and donated by Teresa, who is J A Z Jazzy. Oh, Jazzy Creations. And then we've got another thing from Teresa, Seattle Seahawks Stitch Markers set. We have two Illuminati enamel pins made and donated by Julia, who is Nimrus on Ravelry of Pandia's Jewels. Two winners will each win one pen. We have a project bag from Neighborhood Fiber Co. and a red... Oh, wait, is this all grouped together? Yes. Okay. Okay, all grouped together, a project bag from Neighborhood Fiber Co. and red cable notebook donated by Marianne, who is Knit Central. Lose Me Not mini stitch marker size from JNB Smiley. A Ginger Twist Studio needle gauge, Nessie stitch marker, and 15 grams of Hilltop Cloud Silk Hankies. Yes. We have a skein of fairy tale knits elven music yarn in the green tonal colorway from Eileen, who is leaner. Also from Eileen, we have Space Cadet Lu Lucina, no snow colorway. Uh, yeah, it, do you know which one that is? It's so beautiful. It's the, it's the red one with the blue just on the end. Mm. And it's no snow from White Christmas. And then finally, we have a skein of Zwerger. Opal Diamant in the 6524 colorway, donated by Eileen. Thank you to all of our donors. We really appreciate you very much. And if you would like to see more details about the prizes, see larger photos, etc., you can go to our website. Geekygirlsknit.com. Okay, what else do we have, Dammy? Well, so you must be a member of the Geeky Girls Knit Podcast group on Ravelry in order to participate. There's a social media hashtag if you'd like to post on social media or tag your projects on Ravelry. It's GGK Winter 1819. The Echo thread is going to be locked on the morning of the first of the of first of the March, that and the winners drawn. March. Winners drawn will be will winners will be drawn. On the next podcast following that, winners will have 30 days to claim their prize or they forfeit it. And it'll be used for another giveaway. And there's also a chatter thread on Ravelry so you can encourage each other and post project progress on our projects, gosh. Um, and if you have any questions about the, the owl, you can also post those there. Yes, Winter Wonderland owl, yay, starting Saturday. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're going to move on to the next segment, which we'd actually time traveled for because it was recorded yesterday. And then we'll be back with you in this setting momentarily. And now it's time for Ask the Geeky Girls, the part of our show where you ask us things and we try to answer them. And this week we have a very special guest. And we're actually recording this a day before we record the podcast because you got to do what you got to do. So we'll be wearing different clothes and everything for the rest of the podcast. Sometimes. Not you. Yeah, no, you won't be here. That's why we're recording today. I'm just allowed for this. Yes, only for Ask the Geeky Girls, and that's it. Okay, what is this question for the hubs? The this, doctor. Week, this week's question is from Rebecca, who is restrapped from Michigan. What is the question? I also was interested in knowing about Dr. Hub's ministry and how your religion differs from the Church of England, or is it the same? So we answered the question about the, the Dr. Hub's ministry uh, two or three episodes ago, so go back and check that for that part. But we have the Dr. Hub's here today to talk to us about... Um, why, why, why are we snapping? It's clapping. Oh. Um, that's what the, that's for in ASL. That's, okay. They're clapping um, to talk about our denomination and how it is the same and different from the Church of England. So, don't why don't you tell them what denomination we are and then answer the question? Go. Okay. So, 
we grew up Baptist. Yes. In Texas and New Mexico. Yes. Are you playing with my pom pom? No, I'm oh. pointing at you. <laughs> I'm pointing at you because you spent more time in New Mexico than I did. Yes, I, I'm a new Texican. That's been like a year. Okay. <laughs> so, um, but during seminary, we were part of a Baptist church that used the lectionary for its scripture readings and had a, a liturgical style of worship. And that really took for us. And eventually, we just became Anglicans. Yes, but when we were in Scotland, that's mm -hmm. not what it was called. Okay, so uh, when we moved to Scotland, um, there is what's called the Scottish Episcopal Church. Mm -hmm. And the, so Episcopal over there is the same thing as Anglican. Here. Uh, huh? Here, Anglican here. And it's just the same thing as Anglican total. Okay. I'm, I'm about to explain it. Go for it. Okay. I haven't had enough coffee yet. <clears throat> All right. Um, and so we went to what they call over there an evangelical Anglican church, uh, P's and G's or St. Paul's and St. George's church in Edinburgh. And uh, we joined that church and I guess we became full Anglicans at that point. Um, and so one of the reasons why the Scottish Episcopal Church is called the Episcopal Church and not an Anglican church is because of English-Scottish uh, rivalry. And, um, you know, the, whenever the Scottish Episcopal Church was first formed, they didn't want to see themselves as under the thumb of England and the English Church. Okay. And so they called themselves Episcopalians, even though they were, they were Anglicans. And that's one of the reasons why uh, the, the larger Episcopal Church of the USA mm -hmm. is also called Episcopal, because whenever the uh, Episcopal Church USA was being formed, the Church of England would not sponsor them. At least this is the history that I, rem that, that, that I remember. If there's any ecclesiastical historians out there that want to dispute this, you can, you can do so. Um, I'm a theologian, not a historian. So, so. And, so, um, and so the Church of England would not sponsor them at first. And so uh, the Anglicans in the new USA colonies that wanted to start their own Anglican church went to Scotland for for sponsorship and so because they were called, called the scottish scottish episcopalian church um, um the episcopal church here became called the, the episcopal church so and you can actually see that when you look at their little symbol it's got the saltier flag uh -huh. up, up in there and that's why okay so we fast forward fast forward fast forward and in the united states we have we had a lot of um, uh, independent Anglican groups, I guess you, you would say, that, um, that um, had formed. And a lot of these Anglican, these independent Anglican groups, because having some sort of ecclesiastical sponsorship is still important for Anglicans. Uh, you can never be, be, be totally independent. And so, a, a lot of these groups had been sponsored by, uh, say, the, the Anglican Church in, in, in Nigeria or Rwanda or I can't remember the other one. There's a third one that was a main mm, one. I can't remember. Um, it's okay. It, it, anyways, going on. A lot of these, uh, the, they had been sponsored by Anglican provinces and archbishops in Africa. And so in 2009, um, a lot of these groups got together and decided, well, there had been talks before this, so that's not like they just all, all of a sudden decided. But Today we decided we're just going to do uh, this for the moment, no planning. But in 2009, they held a big, big convocation, and the ACNA was, was, was constitutionally okay, formed. Okay, but what, is the, what does that stand for? Anglican Church in North America. Mm -hmm. And so whenever we were still at P's and G's and uh, we were talking to our rector there about coming back to the States, he suggested that we contact Todd Hunter, who is the Bishop of the Churches for the Sake of Others. Which is part of the ANCNA. Yes. It's, so the ACNA is like the overarching umbrella. Mm -hmm. And then there's these dioceses such as Churches for the Sake of Others. We're in the Cascadia Diocese. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to get a visual and then the churches 
are part of that. So we're part of, of St. Charles, which is one of the parishes in the Cascadia Diocese, which is part of the Anglican Church of North America. Yes. And okay. so uh, we contacted Todd Hunter, uh, their rector su suggested, and uh, we, that's how we originally came into the ACNA was through uh, the Churches for the Sake of Others. And it's, their diocese is based out of California, mm -hmm. uh, but they do lots of church planning, and so they have churches all across the United States, and hopefully one in, in, an, in, uh, in Hawaii soon. Yes, um, yes. So most dioceses are geographically mm -hmm. related. So, so Cascadia that we're part of is primarily Washington, Oregon, but also Alaska because... Because Alaska's off by itself. Yes, so it needs um, but also Canada. Some parts of Canada. I think. I, I think, I maybe. Check that. But Churches for the Sake of Others Diocese is not geographical. There's, there's all over. Well, and that's part, it's part geographical and part all over. Yeah. So. So, and so we came in with them, uh, but then when we moved up here, we transferred over to the Diocese of Cascadia uh, since they were local. And we became official members. Mm -hmm. uh, was that like late summer? Yes. And so we were confirmed in the Anglican Church in yep. in the late summer. Mm -hmm. That sort of seems right. Yeah. And so, um, I mean, the differences, I mean, uh, the Anglican Communion is large and is worldwide. And so, you know, some, some are very, very, very conservative. Some are not. Um, some have no problems with ordaining women. Some do. Um, um, we were fortunate to come and um, we consider ourselves fortunate to, to come into the churches for the sake of others as, a, as our entry point mm -hmm. uh, because they they freely ordain women as priests and rectors mm -hmm. of, of their churches mm -hmm. and then um, Cascadia is a bit more conservative but if a church wanted to, to call a woman as a rector um, um, our bishop has said he would try, he, he would work to make it happen yeah um, so and that's something that was important to us. Mm -hmm. um, and then some, some, some churches are what's typically called more low church. Um, I don't typically like that terminology myself, uh, but that would be, you know, without all the vestments and the fancy clothes and stuff like that. Um, most of the churches in the ACNA tend to like to, to use the, the, the vestments um, and the stoles and the robes and everything like that. Um, um, but there are, uh, some that do tend towards that more, more low church feel. Uh, so are there any like, oh my gosh, holy crap, big differences between the church of England and the Anglican slash Scottish Episcopal communicate community as a, as a whole, are there any like humongous differences that it's like, okay, well that's definitely that, not that. I mean, I wouldn't, I mean. I, I don't know of any. That's why I'm asking in case I missed it. I mean, I wouldn't. I mean, an, an American that goes over to the Church of England, I mean, they're going to, um, they're probably going to feel that this is just simply more British and not American. Mm. Um, okay. So because, you know, you know, having been in Scotland, we know that, you know, they, you know, their feel is, of course, British and Scottish. Mm -hmm. um, you wouldn't expect it to feel American. So, right, right. Um, so, I mean, you know, so, I mean, there is the same diversity in, in the overall Anglican, Anglican communion. The ACNA tends to be more conservative, but um, there, you know, there are churches that, uh, that, that are moderate. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so Dammy, did, did the Dr. Hubs answer the question? I closed the show notes. What was the question? Uh, I closed the show notes. Why did you do that? Because I didn't know I needed it anymore. But I always ask you, did we answer the question? Uh, the, the, uh, uh, hold on. <laughs> Look at my pom pom. Okay, so we answered about the Dr. Hebb's ministry earlier. Yes. And yes, we answered the question. Okay, 
So if anybody has any further questions about that, we, we're always happy to bring the Dr. Hobbs back on. Um, yeah. Yeah. So thank you to, who was that asked that question? Rebecca Restraus. Oh, yes. Thank you, Rebecca, for ask, asking the question. We hope that answered it. Um, hold on just a second. Uh-oh. Oh, right Bring the pinky. Oh. 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 I was going to suggest if anybody wanted to check out. That's not uh, the pinky. From Baptist to Anglican. Um, that uh, this, this book. Oh, I hope you can see it well. The Accidental Anglican by Todd Hunter. Uh -huh. Todd. I tripped into Anglicanism on accident. And so the surprising appeal of the liturgical church. Uh, and so this is the this is the British cover. This is the cover that you get if you buy the the book over in in the UK. Uh, but if anyone's interested, this is a good book to read. It's a good short book, and he has a chapter in there about uh, Archbishop Collini, who's the Archbishop of of Rwanda, um, and uh, Anglican leadership, and John. How are you saying his name? I'm not sure. R Rukyahana. Uh -huh. Dammy, do you see it? No, because I minimized you. Sure, Rukyahana. Um, and then also another book that you can put in the show notes is by Robert Weber, called "Evangelicals on the Canterbury Trail," that talks about um, persons from even more evangelical oriented faith 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 practices that 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 convert to anglicanism can you help me remember to put those in the show notes damn me tomorrow okay somebody would like for you to get the the, the pinky curl oh yes i'll be right back get the pinky, get so, Danny, if somebody has a question for us what should they do we should go to our ask the geeky girls thread in our ravelry group and post it that's right hold on pinky, pinky pearl is coming Pinky Pearl. My baby. Baby, baby, baby Pinky. Oh, he -ho is. Oh, goodness, you hear that? Hi. Tammy. Hi, Tammy. I was so, sweeping. So annoyed. I was sweeping, Tammy. And Bubba woke me up. Oh, also, also, this totally is not Ask the Geeky Girls relevant, but um, somebody rolled over and knocked the Pinky Pearl out of the bed last night. Wasn't me. Was it? Hey. <laughs> oh, no. And she was trying to claw to, to stay from falling. I was asleep. How was I supposed to know? He was asleep. He really was. It was not intentional <laughs> at all. You hurt my baby. He was, I guess, laying next to him, and he rolled over, and he didn't, I mean, he was asleep. He didn't know she was there, and she fell. You well, could have crushed her. She just feels betrayed for a bit, and then she forgives you. Okay, put her up close so that she can say hi to Dammy. She's cuddling you. Oh, goodness. Hi. Look at Dammy. Hi. Hi, Dammy. Hi, people. Hi, Hi famous. Hi, Pinkie Pie. Oh, man. I love you. Look at my Instagram. I famous. I famous. Hello. All right, Pinky Pearl. We got to say bye bye and we'll record the rest of the podcast tomorrow. All right. Okay. Do Are you know, okay with that? If you'll put me down. Okay. All right. <laughs> Let's move on to the next segment. All right. That's it. We've come to the end of the show. Yay. We made it. That was a lot of stuff to talk about. Yay. Yay. Mm -hmm. um, okay. A couple of announcements. First up, the Great Podcaster Craft Together starts January the 1st, so in a month. So um, this is a great way to double dip or poly dip in multiple um, alongs. So uh, there's a link in the show notes to the Ravelry group. We've donated quite a few for prizes, so you should go check it out. Secondly, our 31 Days of Christmas starts Saturday. So what we have done this year is we picked a theme for each week and you will get a 25% discount on all of our patterns that are in that theme using the coupon code 31 days, all capital letters. I want to tell you what is in the first week. So from December the 1st through December the 7th, um, you will get 25% off all of our shawl, shawls, wraps, towels, hats, mitts, 
with a coupon code 31 days. And those patterns are one shot, two shot, three shot, fingerless mitts, a walk in the park cowl, albacal, bashful striped shawl, brackets, landing cowl, coffee date shawl, flat white wrap, I believe in pink hat. Um, I'm in love with an 18th century Scotsman cowl. It has always been forever for me. Sassanac shawl, never such devoted sister's shawl. Nothing is forever. Wait, nothing is. Uh, wait, what is it called? Damn me. It's my new one that just came out. Nothing is lost. Nothing is lost. Nothing is lost forever. Nothing is lost forever. Only changed. Sure. I don't. Oh, well, I'm like a, trying to pull all these from memory. I'm not looking at a list. I am pulling them out of my brain, and my brain apparently doesn't want to work. Nothing is lost, Sassanac, only changed, shawl. Um, please call me Anne with an E shawl, round, round, get around shawl, sea and sky wraps, striation shawl, the best thing shawlette, and wibbly wobbly cowly wally. So that's 5, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 15, 16, there's 18 patterns that are available <laughs> this week, mm -hmm. uh, starting on Saturday and ending at 11.59 p.m. Pacific time on December the 7th. And then um, I can't remember what order the weeks go in. We have, hold on, I can look right here and it will tell me. So the first week is pretty much everything that's not in the other weeks. So shawls, cowls, hats, wraps, uh, mitts. Week two is coffee. Week three is socks, and there's like 50 zillion patterns that week. Week four is fandom. And then the 29th through the 31st will be all of our eBooks. So um, if you, are not uh, if you don't receive our Java Pearl Designs newsletter, you should go to javapearldesigns.com and subscribe because we'll be sending out a newsletter on the first and then again on the seventh to remind you that it's ending uh, before we start the next category. Um, but also at javapearldesigns.com slash thirty one. <laughs> I'm really prepared for this, Danny. I know exactly what I'm doing and what I need to say. Okay, here we go. JavaPearlDesigns.com slash 31-days-of-Christmas. It's linked in the show notes. But there we um, will be putting a list with links so that you can just click on the pattern. You can use this coupon code as many times as you want. There's no limit. The only thing you can't use it for is to gift a pattern to someone. You can't, like, try to gift a pattern to someone and use a coupon code because it's not. They don't have it set up that way for some reason. So we're very excited about this, and we hope that you enjoy celebrating 31 days of Christmas with us. Do we have mm -hmm. any other announcements, Tammy? No. Okay. So our normal stuff, a big thank you. We love you guys. Mm -hmm. To everybody who supports the podcast, I'm tangled in my yarn. Um, no matter how it is that you support us, but an especially big thank you to um, people who financially donate to the podcast because it does cost money to make a podcast happen. Um, there's three main ways you can do that. First is Patreon, which is a site where you pledge a certain amount a month to your favorite creatives, um, and you earn rewards based on the level you donate at. If you'd like to know more about that, what can they do, Dammy? Go to patreon.com slash knit. What's another way? There's a PayPal button from the sidebar of our website if you would like to make a one-time donation. And we are amazon.com, .co.uk, and .ca affiliates. Um, if you're going to shop on Amazon, especially in this holiday season, if you go to our website first and click through the appropriate link, it's in the sidebar, but it's also near the bottom of the show notes each week. Uh, and then shop on Amazon. We get a little money back based on what you purchase. It doesn't cost you anything extra, and it's a great way to support the podcast doing something you would be doing anyway. Um, so I think that is everything. So Dami, why don't you tell them where they can find us online? You can find us at geekygirlsknit.com. There are the links to ever else we are online. YouTube, iTunes, Ravelry, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, etc. That's right. Well, with that, we're going to tell you goodbye. We hope you have a great rest of your week. Um, hope you had a great Thanksgiving. 
um, and that you're entering this holiday season with lots of love and peace and hope in your hearts. So until next week, happy holidays. We'll talk to you again soon. Bye. Bye. And don't forget, stay tuned after the credits for two Christmas karaoke's. All right, first up in our Christmas karaoke 2018 is Walking in a Winter Wonderland. Do, 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 do. Okay, can I start it so it's in a good key? Sure. Okay. Sleigh bells ring, are you listening? In the lane, snow is glistening. A beautiful <laughs> This is not working very well. No. Um, why don't we each do a different verse? Why don't I start and then you do the second verse and then I'll do the third and then you do the fourth. Okay. So, okay, so I can sing it in a soprano key? Yes, instead of a second alto key. Sleigh bells ring, are you listening? In the lane, snow is glistening. A beautiful sight, we're happy tonight. Walking in a winter wonderland. Gone away is the bluebird. Here to stay is the new bird. He sings a love song as we go along. Walking in a winter wonderland. In the meadow we can build a snowman. And pretend that he's Parson Brown. He'll say, are oh, you married? We'll say, no, man. But you can do the job when you're in town. Later on, we'll conspire as we dream by the fire. To face our afraid the plans that we've made. Walking in a winter wonderland. This is going to be so much easier to do when we're together in person. Yeah. Um, okay, so why don't you sing that? So second in our <coughs> 2018 um, mm -hmm. performance list is, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. <laughs> Start it and I'll finish it. Okay. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Everywhere you go, take a look in the five and ten, it's glistening once again, with candy canes and silver lanes aglow. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas, toys in every store, but the prettiest sight to see is the holly that will be on your own front door. Okay, now i got to change the key. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas everywhere you go. There's a tree in the Grand Hotel, one in the park as well, the sturdy kind that doesn't mind the snow. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Soon the bells will start, and the thing that will make them ring is the carol that you sing right within your heart. Merry Yay. Christmas. Happy karaoke. Make sure and go vote Happy for next karaoke. week. Happy karaoke. Make sure and go vote for next week's song, which we will be singing together in person, so there will be no weird delay. Ha ha ha. All right. See you next week. Bye. Bye.